Hey everyone. Welcome to another edition of Coffee with Father James. Sans café, because I am in the church. And I like to talk and walk at the same time, and it's pouring rain outside, so uh, we came up with the idea to do the, the St. Peter's Loop. It's a unique part of the architecture of this building, first built in 1968, that you can literally walk around the entire exterior. It's a, a perfect circle, uh, which is great for parents with small children who are a bit anxious and fidgety during Mass. It's a, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. Uh, today I really want to talk about one thing, one main thing, one thing that is, uh, represents a fairly complex reality. One of the things that I've been struck by since coming to this parish is that in all four locations there was a great history and tradition of reaching out to the poor, to serve the poor. And since arriving as pastor, we've seen a number of new initiatives come online. Uh, I think of the work of the House of Hope, uh, the partnership with the, with the Food Bank, North Christian Food Bank, the, the community chaplaincy, the furniture bank, basically uh, a lot of the initiatives that, that are rooted in, at the St. Anthony's location. Um, all of these things together uh, represent a remarkable act of generosity on the part of our parishes. New initiatives, initiatives that have been around for many, many years. I think of the work of St. Vincent de Paul, uh, which is a very old organization, uh, has been serving the community for many years. The, the Backpack Project, which has been going for 17 years. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of amazing things happening. So I want to share a few concerns with you. Number one, it's clear that I'm sure you would all agree that we want to be a church that is known for its generosity, its kindness, a church that has a heart, a heart for the poor. That's something that we're going to be exploring over the season of Advent. We're actually going to be doing, I'm shaping it right now with some of the other staff members, a preaching series on the four weeks of Advent, looking at our call to let God's love overflow in our lives in a way that touches the community, especially as we reach out to, to serve the poor and those on the peripheries. So we're going to be taking those four weeks to, to look at uh, some of the initiatives that we do as a parish, why we do it, looking at Catholic social teaching, etc., etc. So that's one of the things that we're going to be doing. Uh, another thing is we, passing under the tunnel right now, this is actually behind the, the big screen that you see where Lady of Guadalupe is. So that we're almost, look, we're almost back to where we started. That's 360 degrees right there. There's the stairwell that goes up to the office. So one of the things, we want to obviously continue to be a parish that, that reaches out to the poor because that is such a, an important part for our credibility of who we are as Christians. We want to be able to do it in a way that is life-giving for everyone. So what do, what do I mean by this? Well, it comes down to the impact of, of the amalgamation uh, on what we do. I've experienced this in previous parishes where when you bring a number of parishes together into a new reality, within that new reality, parishioners rightfully believe and feel that all of the projects that they brought with them into this new amalgamated reality are worthy projects and should continue. And fair enough, I totally understand that. Uh, but what often happens is that you now have often an increase in the number of projects and initiatives taken on by a parish, and therefore there's a multiplication effect on the asks that are made of parishioners, because it's our parishioners that support uh, all of these initiatives, they, they fund them, they volunteer their time and talent uh, for, for them as well. And I would say that since the parish came together to be Our Lady of Guadalupe, just a rough estimate, it seems to me that the overall number of outreach uh, activities and projects has probably increased about 40, even 50 percent. I don't know, that's not, a, that's not a scientific number, but I know that by, by virtue of coming together and wanting to continue to do everything we've always been doing, that there's an increase in the activities. S at the same time, 
the same time, we know that since the amalgamation and COVID, that we have had a decrease in the number of parishioners. So right now, Sunday attendance, we're averaging at about 60% of the numbers we had in 2017. Now, 2017 was four years ago, but it was pre-amalgamation, pre-COVID. So conservatively, I believe that we've got a 40% reduction in the number of parishioners and a 40% increase in the number of asks being made. So how do we manage this in a way that is not overwhelming? Because we want to continue to be a generous parish. So it obviously means that we can't communicate and ask parishioners to support these ministries the way that we did before, uh, because we will simply exhaust people. Uh, the well can quickly run dry. Hey, look, two laps now, two laps. Uh, the well can run dry. And we, here's what I, do, I don't want to happen, <laughs> is that every time you come into church, every single time, uh, someone's got their hands out. Someone's asking you to give. Uh, to this project or that project, and they're all fantastic projects. They're all worthy of support, but we don't want to be inundated. And so one of the questions we've, we've been asking as a, as a parish staff and as a leadership team is, how do we coordinate these requests? How do we uh, bring them together? How do we streamline? How do we avoid duplication? How do we strategically uh, use our resources and these opportunities for maximum impact in the community. We can't simply keep doing everything the way we did it before simply because we've been doing it for a long time. And I hope you can understand that. Now, we don't have any ready answers yet, but we're making a big step this Advent in trying to consolidate and simplify by the introduction of our Lady of Guadalupe gift catalog and you'll see an image right here on the screen of what we're talking about now what is this well basically it's an attempt to simplify as i said the end and put together uh not just a way to fund these ministries but also to communicate about them you'll see in this brochure some of the things that we do as a parish believe it or not this gift catalog doesn't contain all the things that we do um, <laughs> but this is an opportunity to say, to, to look at, at uh, for Christmas perhaps, a way that we can support, you know, support these different uh, activities and projects. People generally are a lot more generous at Christmas. We want to be generous. Uh, we're often more aware at Christmas of the gap between the haves and the have nots. And so we wanted to give you an opportunity to discern and pray about and think about and discuss with your families the kind of charitable projects that you want to support. And you'll, you'll find in the gift catalog a whole range of things uh, with different suggested amounts uh, to support. Now, now here's what we hope will happen. This coming Sunday, and these gift catalogs will be available for the next couple of weeks, that you take a copy of the gift catalog home with you from Mass. Discuss it with your family and discern what you want to give to. Here's the, here's the thing too, here's the other side of it. Um, going through the tunnel again, coming up to the stairs. It's kind of dark in here. Um, so, yep, here's we are with the stairs. We're gonna do one more lap. Are you counting the laps? <laughs> so, I, I, it was about a month ago I was thinking about Christmas and this happened to me a number of years ago. I don't know if you've experienced this, but I was out Christmas shopping for one of my nephews, or for my nephews, and I, I automatically thought, well, last year I spent, you know, you know, X amount of dollars on my nephew, so this year I have to up it, I have to, I have to spend more. And, I, I, and looking back, I saw that over the years, I've, it's like, you know, you've, you've got to go higher, you've got, you've got to do more. And, I, and you realize that we're, we're spending, all, spending money on stuff that really, like, I know my nephews, they might not like me saying this, but they don't need more stuff. They get more stuff than, than they would ever use in a lifetime. Uh, so what are we doing at Christmas? What is the meaning of Christmas? And are we really simply buying into this, you know, manipulative materialistic commercialism that, that inundates us? I mean, I, was, I went for a haircut on Friday, the day after Remembrance Day, day after Remembrance Day, and there was 
there were Christmas carols on the radio. Christmas carols on November 12th. It's like Pavlov's dog. You know, hark the herald angels sing, off you go to the shopping mall to get the next stupid thing. That even rhymes. And so maybe there's a different way as Christians for us to give gifts. And that was part of the inspiration behind the gift catalog as well. I'm not sure my nephews will be too impressed about their gifts this Christmas, but a kid might get a new jacket or someone who's hungry might get a meal or a family who's in need might get a Christmas basket from my nephews. And I think that's pretty good. And I think that's bring, something that brings us a little closer to the true meaning of Christmas. So gift catalog, pick it up this weekend. The reason we're doing it is to give you options for a different type, to give different types of gifts this Christmas, but also because we don't want you to be overwhelmed. We don't want to bombard you with non-stop requests. We want to put them together, communicate them properly, communicate them well, and give you the options to discern, to discuss with your family, to pray about it, what you want to give. Thank you and God bless. And next week, I will be back with a real cup of coffee. Please hit the bell to subscribe. We'll see you next time.